All right, let's do it live on a football Friday edition of Cleveland Browns Daily. Merely Bo, the great Z. How you living, buddy? Great. Gosh. Full of full zest. Ten. Full of zest ten on zest a football you. Friday. I mean, right. how could you not I love be? it. Yeah. We've been waiting what, for Gibbe? a long time. I, no, no. Are you all the way healthy? Full, is no. it a full 10? And the only reason why I say that is y- you and I were both taking turns coughing up lungs in the last Yeah, no, it's still not 100%, but, like, yeah. it's just a lingering – Unfortunately, lingering dry cough. But you know what? Champions don't make excuses. They yeah. go on. Hydrate. And they try hydrate. And, no, anyway. you take shots of Jameson. <laughs> well, <laughs> we got a program to do. Here. Maybe we're a combination of them both. Yeah, we're professionals right now. Get back come, come. We're just trying to focus on uh, doing our job. Just had a great chance right now. A little peek behind the curtain before we came on the show. We got a chance to go spend some time with Joe Flacco. Yeah, I look forward to hearing that later in the show. You won't. <laughs> but you will hear it on Sunday. You'll hear it on game day. Um, yeah, and then hopefully on all the, the social channels. Hopefully everywhere. In case you miss it on game yeah. day. Yeah, go ahead. He, just, what a great dude. Yeah. Living the dream. Like, literally couldn't be happier. Yeah. And, you know, I joked with him. I said, I know you won a Super Bowl in Baltimore. There are a lot of personalities on that team, certainly. I said, but it is not out of the question. I yeah. said, And I pose it to him as a question more like, how do you feel? But. That he's more popular in Cleveland today than he was at any point ever in Baltimore. <laughs> and it's true, because that's the so, way that this city operates. Yeah, I would think probably the apex of his Baltimore popularity would be after that run when, when, when he won the, the Super Bowl. in the Super Bowl. He got the new contract, and it was, let's go. So For that, that, sure. That's it. That's but that team was still, it felt like, dominated by yeah. other individuals and personality. He was crazy that run though, wasn't he? 12 touchdowns, no picks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and I didn't they have to go beat like Manning in Denver. And he threw a touchdown on a basically threw a Hail Mary at a time right. where they needed over Raheem Moore, who was a great player out of UCLA, actually spent some time with the Browns, and that like kind of ruined his career giving up that touchdown. Flacco threw it right over his head. Yeah, he had an unbelievable run. But the point is that he's been here for two games and it's no, it's true. approaching when he was a Super Bowl champion and Super Bowl MVP. And I think he's just really enjoying the experience, embracing it. And he's a guy that you want to root for. Like, I think everybody in that locker room respects him and wants to see him have success. And after you spend a few minutes with him, you feel that same way. Just a nice guy kind of living the dream. And he said, it's so cool for my kids to get me to, to see me doing this. And they went out uh, out after the win on yeah. East 4th. And he's like, and my kids were like, what is going on? Like, people were mobbing them. Everybody's so nice and it's, How old are his great. kids? Do you get know. a sense of it? I don't know. I'm sure we can. I'm sure that's readily so available he, information. He brought him in Monday afternoon. I ran into him downstairs. They're young, little guys. Young, yeah, they're young. So, so they're really getting to probably, see him. They're getting to see him yeah. be him. Yeah. You know, this, you know, we in the old days you would get married young, you'd have kids young. Sure. And now you know that's being pushed back, and it happens with professional athletes. Many that I have that we talk to here, or that yeah, I know in personal life, you know in personal life. Um, their children came either at the very end of their playing career or after. Right. And so there is no point of reference on daddy being a baller. Yep. So I can't imagine what it means to him to have them be able to see, oh, dad's got some juice. Dad's got some juice. Yeah. And yeah. there's no better town to have juice in. There's, there's the no better town. Or, uh, that, that it was Jacoby them. Jones. Yeah. This is the, and the they needed it, right? It was like yeah, they're down it's, seven with it's 30 30 37 seconds left. seconds left, dude. Look at that. Right over Ray Moore. Oh, Jeez. baby, to the house. Denver's up 35-28 with 37 seconds at And they home. had to go 70 yards. This They're is Manning. The Manning and the Manning. Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. And he hits a bomb. Yeah, sure does. Sure right does. Right over the top. It's um, wild, though. You know, you think about the fact that he had won 99 games as a starting quarterback, many of which had come again. I'm pretty sure 18 of them had come against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. And then to get his 100th career win in our stadium, where he had won many times. Mm -hmm. A great many times. In fact, his last two wins have happened in our stadium, once with us, once with the Jets. Yeah, I was in the stands for that one. That was a a BMZ birthday that went south. That went south in a hurry. (laughs) In a big way. In a big way. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, just a great guy. Certainly excited to see him. And I think he kind of is the perfect, poised, steady, calm veteran that a team that is in the midst of unbelievable chaos truly does need and you can tell he's enjoying it and it's certainly not lost on him how special it is and and I can tell you Browns fans he's going to give you absolutely everything he has to be the best of his ability in this stretch run his best will be enough it already has proven to be um said this Monday out of the Rams game he's a pro he's a pro 
He's a pro. He's it's there's a steadying influence that he's had on the roster. What um, what word comes before pro? He's the consummate. consummate. He's a consummate. He's a consummate pro. pro. Uh, there can be only one. Um, no, he is, and he in a, in a season of utter chaos. Chaos. He came at the right time. The right time. And so now it's what can come of it from here. That's the next step. But it it's been it's been fun. This has been fun. What's been so cool about this season in some ways is that we've started four quarterbacks and they've each had their moment as kind of like the toast of the town, right? You know, obviously with Deshaun against Baltimore, that was feeling great. PJ with the big comeback against the Colts and obviously beating the Niners. DTR, the drive against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, it's yeah. taken absolutely everybody yeah. for this team to have, have forged this story at 8-5 and five and, you know, Tremendous job by the coaching staff, tremendous job by the players, the buy-in for even guys who are backups. It, it's wild. It, and you want this to have a happy ending because they deserve it, quite frankly. And for all that the Browns have gone through and been through, and the fact they keep fighting, they keep finding a way. To me, when you really think about the emotions that were coming out of the Baltimore game, then the letdown of that Wednesday morning, the fact that they went out and beat the Steelers at home, and we know the Steelers are not a great team, but it's the Steelers. It was a game that could determine the playoff fate for both organizations, yeah. and your rookie quarterback led you down the field to win the game. It's just awesome. Oh, I, I remember talking to a neighbor after the – we found out Deshaun on Tuesday? or Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. So the Wednesday, Wednesday show we did at 1 o'clock. Um, and I said, and I understand what the marching orders were around here. And I remember they were even, it was kind of like outward, like on we go, up we go. Yeah, no, don't, don't even don't dare even, don't say make sorry. This, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. This sucks or anything. And I'm like, well, I don't know. We're sitting up here for two hours. I felt like I was presiding over a funeral. The, yeah. Um, and in many ways we were, <laughs> you know, we were, um, but this team has fought back and, and honestly, like we're two games into Flacco, but it did feel like the other options, with the exception of Deshaun, because we were, he was just starting to launch when the injury happened in terms of being completely comfortable and all in, um, it did feel like the other options had a shelf life. And we've seen that in the league where you get it. And I think DTR still has a very bright future in and the league. And he was ascending. Sure. But, but I, it's also like there's, oh, we start to figure you out thing that For happens sure. in the league with these young quarterbacks. And people get tape and they start to sort it out. And sure. so there, to me, it always felt like there was a shelf life to what that could be with PJ and to DTR, more so DTR just because of his age more than anything else. Like young quarterbacks get sorted out by the league eventually, typically is the way that it goes. This, there, this coming at this time, this is just another example of that, where <laughs> there is really no figuring out Joe Flacco. Yeah. Like he's all in. He's 38 years old. Like knows what he's doing. Yep. And so this is very sustainable. Provided there aren't any I think he injuries. can be better. I mean, he's completing fifty five percent of his passes. He's gonna. I think he's gonna be in the sixties. Even that's a little deceiving to me, though, because we still have a ton of drops that, that ha we had a ton of them in the Rams game. Like I, you know, I I still think that there's. I think he's playing better than even statistically it looks. Agreed. If that makes sense. Yes. So yeah, gonna be fun. Um, yeah. So that's the fun part of the day. Here's the negative part of the day. We wrapped up practice for the week. We've got the Bears here on Sunday. Juan Thornhill, Ethan Posick, Oboe, and Kanashik um, all out. Is that is that what I is that there's no the way I read that? No. Well, you can't read it because there's it doesn't say anything other than listing their names. But my guess is are these are these, are outs, these outs or the ones I wrote? They're or do it, not practice. No, no, no. Out uh, Posick, go down, Thornhill, go down Oboe, the, Go down to the handwriting. I just right, wrote those in. This out. Got it. So that's everybody up top. Yep. Right? Yeah. So it is everybody up top. It is. Uh, they're all yeah. Uno was giving you updates from practice because we didn't uh, have I got you. So we just needed Yeah, the Good side. work, so Uno. So the out is all of the people I mentioned. I didn't misspeak. Nope. Posick, Thornhill, Obo, Kunashik. Questionable uh, Ward Elliott, Anthony Walker Jr. AWOC added. Added. AWOC tweaked a knee in practice. We'll know in the next 24 hours. Um, I, My guess right here, very good sign on Denzel Ward for Elliott. It's concussion protocol, so that's probably a very good sign for his availability as well. Anthony Walker, Friday ads are never good. Um, so we'll just have to kind of wait and see uh, on that one. But I, I do think Denzel Ward will be back, which is a great thing for the Browns. And we're very Honestly fortunate. Honestly necessary. I mean, yeah, it is. It's, well, you, you, it's too much. I mean, you, you got – what are we on? Our, is it our fourth and fifth safeties? Yep. Now you're on your fourth and fifth tackles now. Yep. Um, fourth, fifth, and sixth safeties. Yeah, right. You're on your second 
tight, our second center, who the good news there is, is Nick was great and had won the job two years ago. Your before fourth quarterback, his own injury, second your fourth running quarterback, back. yeah, so forth and so on. So, and if A walks out, how would that impact the playing there? Yeah, you know, you'd probably still get a ton of of JOK, who's been playing a lot lately and playing very well, second in the NFL with uh, 16 tackles for loss. Um, you would probably get Tak playing more Mike linebacker uh, as well in that one because Kunashik is out, so it would be Taki and, and JOK. And when you went base, it would be Taki, JOK, and Tony Fields would be the next guy up. And we're going to see some of the three safety looks as well with Deron Harmon getting into the mix also. But, yeah, this is a this is a Browns team that, you know, you can just – when you just put the little X's through, unfortunately, of people that are not available, it's a, it's a fairly substantial group. Yeah, we're we're at a smoke and mirrors point now. Well, yeah, and you think about the people that that are already that are already gone, right? That aren't even on my boards right now to be xed out. You know, Nick Harris did a great job last week. Forty three pass blocking snaps, did not allow a single pressure. Was excellent in the run game. We're very lucky to have that depth and to have Bill Callahan. Um, you know, you got Jaron Christian who is who's done pretty well. No sack in two straight games. James Hudson has only given up one sack in his last six starts. We are holding it together, but it's it's taken a real real effort by the players, by the coaches, by everybody to get it going. This is not going to be an easy game. You mentioned Denzel coming back. Why that's important? Critical. Yeah, DJ Moore is DJ Moore's playing as well as basically anybody in the league when Justin Fields is his quarterback. In fact, when Justin Fields targets DJ Moore this year, he has a 144 rating. That is the best in the NFL this season. It's the second best all time since they've tracked this at, at Next Gen Stats. The best ever was Russell Wilson had a 158.3, which is a perfect quarterback rating, targeting Tyler Lockett in the 2018 season in Seattle. With Fields, uh, D.J. Moore is averaging 95.6 yards per game, 15.4 yards per catch, and he has seven touchdowns. Those are all of seven of his touchdowns. Fields has been a great deep ball passer. D.J. Moore has been one of the most explosive deep ball receivers. And here's another one that stood out to me. He's accounted for 40.1% of Chicago's receiving yards. That's the second highest rate in the league behind only Tyreek Hill, who's at 40.9% of Miami's, which is wild. But yeah. You're talking about plays of more than 20 yards in the air. D.J. Moore third in catches, fifth in yards, third in touchdowns. I mean, this is, they, are, they are a dangerous big play offense. So having Denzel Ward back there with MJ and with Greg, while we're going to be new at safety with Hickman and DeAnthony Bell, and Duran, you're at least going to feel pretty good at the corner position. Yeah, there, there are. We used this analogy yesterday. They, they're Rob Deer, Rob Deer, Pete Cavilia, Pete Cavilia, yeah, Juan Gonzalez towards Juan, the end, yeah. towards the end, yeah, towards the end. The beginning, he was a horse. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's what it is. I mean, they're Conseco, Dave Kingman, a Dave. That's way back. Yeah, that's the. But that's what this is. Like they yeah. don't, they don't sustain drives. But when they break one, they go ninety. Like they are Rob Deere is a great. Rob Deere, yeah. he's, he's he was great jacked. Guy. Was he? He was. Or was it a lot of? There was a lot of weight to that too. It wasn't quite. No, Incavelia was more of like a of a stocky I think, guy. I, I feel Rob, Rob Deere was a pretty was pretty rotund. Was pretty yoked in my recollection. We'll see with the I'm tires. Curious. Yeah, Rob Deere. I know he had a fantastic stash. Great stash, massive biceps, as I recall. Yeah, Rob Deere was in good shape. Rob Deere was just jacked. Incavelia was round and squat. Rob Deere was. This is the Rob Deere. I, yeah, I remember him with the Tigers. Is what I remember him with. Yeah, like yeah. that's a that's a pretty lean, muscular dude. Yeah, great stash. Incavelia was Incavelia was round, but he could he could mash it as yeah. There's Petey. Look at Incavelia. <laughs> that guy's great. <laughs> so oh. good. He was yeah. Look at him, young with the Texas Rangers. Oh man. Oh uh, yeah. Happy days. By the way, I could name more people, obviously, from that era in five seconds. In fact, I probably name more than I could name Major League Baseball players, period, today. I could name more players on the 89 Oakland A's than I could name Major League Baseball. For sure than I could name I could do the whole team. Cleveland Guardians, for sure. I've, I could do the lineup. I'm not even from there. So, yeah. I mean, no, it's, I don't know it's what's happening. Or maybe you are from there. Or maybe I am. But yeah, that's the this is this is what they are. So that's I mean, you think about the safety issue. That's I'll tell you what, be tricky. R Ronnie Hickman was the guy that the Browns identified very early in this process that they wanted to be a Cleveland Brown. I think they're very lucky he went undrafted, and you know he had very high highs with the Ohio State Buckeyes and some yep. low lows. But he's really stepped in and played very well. Uh, I got a chance to talk with him on Wednesday for the coaches show another great kid. DeAnthony Bell's been waiting for this opportunity forever out of West Florida. 
Mm-hmm. You know, this is his opportunity to start a game in the NFL. And then you got Deron Harmon, who's a three-time Super Bowl champ. He's, he's got more career interceptions than really, I think, probably anybody on the team, certainly that is active. The only one who would have been in the vicinity would probably be Rodney McLeod. He's got 23 picks. You know, Denzel's got 15 for comparison's sake. It's wild what we're going to get out there, but we're going to have a mix of youth and, and, and veteran leadership, and um, it's going to be fun. But they've got you've got to be careful, and a lot of it's going to be on the corners, but we cannot let the ball go over our head in this one. Your best bet is to try to force them to go on long drives. That's not what they do. They are no. a big play offense, big plays on the ground, 57 runs of 10 or more than yards, and they are big plays through the air. Justin Fields on balls of more than 20 yards in the air this year, 47% completions, eight touchdowns, no picks, a 133 rating. That's top five in the league. Yeah. He's had, to, He's had a good year. Okay, so like kind of going into the numbers yeah. and then watching some of their tape and then watching their the TV copy of last week, I could understand why they would move off of him because it just resets the timer on the money. Mm-hmm. And you can get probably some pretty good for him, but he is ascending. He, is, mm-hmm. he has improved significantly. I think, and we've been saying it, and I know the rest of the league is starting to catch on. You put him in Atlanta, yeah, and that I think they become a team of like they're the favorites to win that division next year. If he goes to Atlanta, Forse- they're, foreseeable too because yeah. it'd all be young. It'd all be twenty five. Right. Pitts, and- Drake, London, Bijan, Algier, all of it. You'd be in pretty good shape. And they have a good offensive line as well. He's a Georgia kid. <laughs> yes, he is. It would make a lot of sense. Um, too much I guess, sense. I guess we need your official statement on the final demise of your Los Angeles Chargers. Well, good. Bye. Good riddance to Brand Saley. Happy is gone, and now somebody needs to unlock, much, unlock Justin Herbert and everything they can do. How much did you watch last night? How much were you? Um, so I was watching on my phone because there were some fantasy implications, sure. but I wasn't watching, you know. Please tell me you had Raiders. Closely. I did have a Raider, Devontae Adams, yeah. Okay, and you played him. because I you, did. It was, it, you were saying, like, what do we do? Yeah, I did. I, and look – he ended up having a nice game. It was great for him to finally come back to, to fantasy relevance. But, I mean, it was 42 nothing at the half. It was insane what just the lack of – that felt like – do you remember last year in Denver – before they obviously they hired Sean Payton, I think yep. it was a Christmas game. It was a it was a primetime game where they played against the Rams, and they basically quit. Yes, I do. I do recall on this. the field, on the coach, all of it. We quit. Yeah, didn't this happen with? Um, that was a statement that they made. That no was, question. Didn't this happen with McDaniel's or was it Gruden? It happened with one of them, where the Raiders guys were like, "We're done." Might have been McDaniel's this year. That would have been this year. There was a slumping that they took yeah. where they were just like, "Yeah, we're done," and then you make no. There's no choice. But forty-two to nothing. By the way, they went from zero to sixty-three, right? Which is amazingly only the second biggest jump a right. team has ever made in over not not the biggest. You have to go, it's like in the fifties though, yeah. right? Where something yeah, yeah. crazy like that happened. Um, it was what a joke. Every time I looked this, down, it was like Chargers fumble, Raiders touchdown. Chargers fumble, Raiders touchdown. Chargers fumble, Raiders touchdown. And what did, did you watch any of it? I'm at the bar last night. Yeah, described the bite to eat with the the misses. Yeah, and I told him I literally him, went to cash out. In the time that I cashed out, finished my beer and walked out, they'd kicked off and it was fourteen nothing, and I was like, I'm good. That's enough. I yeah. know where this is going. I was just I curious anymore. if anybody heard like how Al handled it. Like, was it fun for him? To, I don't think so. To like be in Vegas. They and interviewed it? the one thing I did watch because it was made the way around Twitter. They interviewed Brandon Staley going into the half. Kaylee Hartung interviewed him down forty-two to nothing. You got to be kidding me. No, and he was I like, "Can we find like, this? I would oh, yeah, love to it's, hear that." It's, yes, it's on. Just put it on Twitter. It's easy. Um, oh my God! And that's he's, unbelievable. Yeah, he's just like, well, this is not us. We got to go play for pride now. Richard Sherman at the halftime called for the <laughs> the Chargers to fire him in game. Richard Sherman at halftime goes, the Chargers have a real good chance tonight to make history, and they should. They should fire their coach at halftime and come back out without him. <laughs> Jeez. They were fired today. He was fired today. Tom Telesco, the general manager, was fired today. Um, so that, that you know, is the end of that. It, t- ends, it ended up 63-21. to 21. I think that's a tough one for Telesco, to be honest with you, because – He's made good moves and put together a good roster. That hole has been always less than the sum of its parts. 
that to me is not as much on the general manager. I mean, he brought in Khalil Mack. Khalil yeah. Mack's been leading the league in sacks. Brought, you know, I think he's the only thing a, is he's been there eleven years. Yeah, and he's got three playoff appearances and two wins. Yeah, and you feel like it should be better. So more that's than a that. long run. It's a nice rope. It's yeah. I mean, it's a decade. That's a more leash. than what you get. I oh yeah. It's the biggest waste of talent uh, that I can remember. Criminal. You know, I. You try to even think of in other sports where there was an, an incredible abundance of talent that just Abundanza. underachieved yeah. the way that they have. It's it's wild. And it's a great job. Like Herbert's never won a playoff game, right? No, he's not. Uh-uh. And they lost last year in a game in which Lawrence threw three they interceptions in the first half, and they were up 28 to nothing. Cook City, and then not. they came all the way back. So I don't um, – I it feels like a great job based on the talent and the fact that you have the quarterback – um, I know that what you'll hear from this, you'll hear Lincoln Riley for this. You're going to hear somebody like offensive guru they should. guy. You're going to hear those type of guys. I bet you're going to hear, I, I bet Ben Johnson, the D, the offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions, will be a very appealing candidate for that. I wonder if they go that way or if they go with like established NFL who head. Sean Payton is the one who should have that waited the and one. gone there. Yeah. I just, he, here's the problem. I, I you understand. Gibbe. You look great today, Gibbe. He does look great. It's really nice. bouncing around. I understand it's the like talent, cam, and I understand, you know, it, it the location and everything. But you are never going to have a home field advantage, no matter how good you are. You are not. You're going to be a second class citizen in that town. Well, I think that's every. That's both of them, though. I mean, the Rams are kind of in that boat too. There's more of them, but not much. Um, you know, like it's just. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, tough. it's a tough sell. The, the only team that would have been an Abu Danza, as you put it, is the Raiders. That's the only team. If you put them back in yes, L.A., they, could, that, they would have been right. They would have been, it's still been behind the Lakers and the Dodgers. But, but they, they would have been, been number one. Football. Right there. They would have been football number one by a mile, and they would have been able to jump start, jump to the near the upper echelon. They'd have been right there with the Dodgers. Yeah. And they would have been a cultural phenomenon because yes. that's what the Raiders were in Los Angeles. And it's unfortunate that, that you get robbed of that. Yes, because you they're they're very sterile in Vegas, and whoever was going to be in Vegas was going to be very sterile. Sure, it's the Raiders the were deal. great in Oakland. Yep, and they were great in L.A. They, that's why I think you should have taken a. It doesn't there matter. Is it more of a sterile team that could exist than the Chargers? Yeah, I I believe Nick has Staley's halftime interview. All right, go ahead, Nick. Let's go. The performance of your team in the first half. This wasn't good enough. That wasn't us out there. You know, did not come ready to play. You know. Second half, we got to fight for pride, but uh, it's a good group. We got to regroup at halftime. Come out and try to play a better second half. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate the fact that he even stopped by for that interview. Okay. Al, <laughs> that's my guy. That is my guy right there. What's going on? What is, what he, is doing? he doing? What are you doing? You're coming all the way to a window. Paparazzi. Connor with a K coming all the way to a window with a, a pensive text and then gone. I think it's like I think he took a picture of us. I don't know. It was like an emphatic come. Came right at us. Did you see that? No, I saw him. Miss Z saw she was sitting right here. That's outrageous behavior. By the way, Dean Spanos, part of his message to uh, the fan base: We are clearly not where we expect to be. However, and we need a new vision. Doing nothing in the name of continuity was not a risk I was willing to take. Sure, our fans have stood strong through so many ups you and have downs no fans. and close games. They deserve more. Frankly, they've earned more. Yeah, maybe you should have not moved them from uh, San, San Diego. Diego. Building what and a maintaining town. a championship caliber program remains our ultimate goal, and reimagining how we achieve that goal begins today. I will say this: like you got now, you have a little bit of a head start on the rest of the league. In terms yeah. of and it's it's one of those things that's uh, look our season's over. This is going to make the fans happy. It's going to give them something to focus on now for the rest of the year. Yeah, and 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 all of that. So I totally understand it. You know, we were talking yesterday when you mentioned that you thought Kroenke, or maybe it was I don't know if maybe it was you. Somebody told me this that Kroenke would never have wanted the Raiders to yeah. be there with their no no, no yeah, that, you said, yeah right yeah I said that. But at the same time, if he owns the building, isn't that what's good for the goose good for the gander? Like the Raiders would pump that place. It would have a lot of buzz. His his attitude was it'll be pumped anyway. It's the NFL. Yeah, and I'm not going to be having my tenants upstage me. And he knew that the one that would do that is the Raiders. And so he said no Raiders. Al Davis. Or it was was it Al or Mark, Mark at that time, or was Al already in charge? 
was Mark already in charge at that time? I know Mark when had this it when was they, going on the last few years. When the decision was made yeah. to decide who's going where, I don't know if that was an Al or Mark decision, but either way, it was Mark. It was Mark because be. he was Al still with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al's been gone for a while. Yeah, um, because he was still doing it in Oakland, but that they were adamant that anybody but Raiders, yeah, they can't be there. Um, the reality is, is the Spanish family probably should have sold the Chargers and and kept them find somebody in Southern San Diego. in San Diego yeah. who could have kept them is the way that that should have gone. All right, Courtney Cronin behind enemy lines coming up next. Before we get to that, though, those were your hot topics of the day presented by Vivid Seats, official fan experience partner of your Cleveland Browns. We're off and running. Cleveland Browns Daily brought to you by Bally Bet, sports betting partner. Your Cleveland Browns are now live in Ohio on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Pet Supplies Plus give you a chance to win tickets to home games all season long while providing the best deals for your pet at 75 stores throughout Ohio. Enter to win at clevelandbrowns.com slash Pet Supplies Plus and receive a coupon as well. We go behind enemy lines. ESPN NFL Nation Bears reporter and ESPN radio host, our old friend Courtney Cronin, joins us via the Twisted T hotline, official sponsor of your Cleveland Browns. Courtney, this is like the most interesting team in the NFL from the standpoint of they can go in about a million different directions. They obviously control the draft. From a from a fan perspective, what do the fans want to happen here the last month? What do they want to have happen in the next six months? Let's start at the quarterback position. It's pretty divided. I mean, there's a group of fans uh, that want Justin Fields to come back, that think that the path to success is staying on what they've already done for two years and building that and drafting Caleb Williams in the draft and then going to get Marvin Harrison Jr., going to get some more offensive line help, spending resources in the draft on, or in free agency on defense. And those people wouldn't be wrong. I mean, that is a winning formula if you know that this quarterback can get you to the next step. But, like, outside of that, there's the group of fans that look at the draft and say, there's no way you can pass up on Caleb Williams. You have the number one overall pick. You normally don't want to have the circumstances that lead you to be drafting first overall in back-to-back years or at least being in possession of that pick in back-to-back years. So why waste it? Go get Caleb Williams. It's an obvious situation. So it's pretty much a divided 50-50 split among this fan base, and that's why these last four games and really since Fields came back against Detroit the first time in Week 11, why there's been so much weight put onto each performance every time he goes out there to see – if anything's going to tip the scale in one direction or another. Courtney, I guess the the next logical question would be then, who is ultimately going to make that decision? And then the follow-up to that would be, how is Fields handling all of this? I'll start with Fields because that's the easy thing. Like you heard him a few weeks ago, or I think it was last week, when he talked about you know, controlling what he can control in all of this. And it was the first time that he had mentioned, you know, whether I'm here or somewhere else next year. He knows he has an NFL future, so he's secure in that, which I think allows him to to still go forward every day and play his best football the way we've seen. You know, the interceptions have gone down, his pocket presence, his footwork have all improved the last couple weeks. Like, if you're not worried about your future because you know you're good either way, like, you can play like that, and you're not pressed in the same way that others in that situation might be now you know on the on the flip side of that who's going to be making that decision I have a feeling you know I mean Kevin Warren the new team president and CEO he was hired in January he's been really quiet these last couple of months he hasn't said anything publicly about what's going on behind the scenes but he's not just this, the typical team president that comes in and, and runs the business operation. Like he has a hand in the football operation part of the Chicago Bears. And that's not to say that, you know, he will have the final say, but both he and Ryan Poles have been in lockstep, uh, you know, since the, since the two of them got together in January. I mean, it's not often that you hear about the team president being involved in meetings at the combine, uh, you know, just giving him a lay of the land. That was Ryan Pohl's choice to have Kevin Warren there. And when I remember hearing that back in March, I'm like, all right, this is, this is a different arrangement than we've been used to seeing that I've been used to seeing covering the NFL where the team president typically is over his side of the operation and the GMs over his, these two have a lot of cross pollination going on. And when it comes to the quarterback next year, Ryan Poles, obviously, if he remains a general manager, which I have no indication to think he won't, despite all of the noise that's going on about, you know, the head coach. Does he stay? Does he go? Does the quarterback stay? Does he go? Um, I think Ryan Poles is going to be making that situa- that decision with Kevin Warren also part of the equation. I-, I can't help but smirk because Kevin Warren and Justin Fields, of course, have a history. Kevin Warren sure. was the commissioner of the Big Ten when they canceled <laughs> the season in COVID, and Justin Fields was out front representing Ohio State and a handful of other teams that wanted to play on Good Morning America saying, let us play. They have a well-documented history that goes back to 2020. Um, so that and that's what wild to think that that's how that could all be shooken out. I just had to add that in. Go ahead, Z. No, it's it's going to be one of the more interesting stories because he is playing much better. And part of the reason for that, obviously, is DJ Moore. Courtney, are we talking enough about what DJ Moore has done this year, especially when Fields has been his quarterback? 
Probably not because he's on a team that has a five and eight record and you know, the the results speak for themselves. When when DJ Moore's not on the field, which you haven't seen this season, but we've seen it in other moments, um, like what like take a look at what happened last year. That whole sample size is the is what you need to point to when you say, okay, the effect of DJ Moore on Justin Fields and where Fields has been able to elevate his game, there's a reason he was such a critical part of that trade package for the number one overall pick in the offseason because they needed to give Justin Fields support so they could effectively grade him as a quarterback to evaluate him in year three, which is always such a pivotal year to try and figure out if you're picking up the first around quarterback's fifth year option by the end of this season and to do that you needed to give him tools the way that you know on the flip side of that they've done on defense by going out and getting Montez Sweat at the trade deadline it was the same logic for Ryan Poles in making sure that DJ Moore was on this team this year and the numbers aren't talked about enough like Justin Fields has the highest QBR of any quarterback receiver combo when he's targeting DJ Moore that's higher than Tua and Tyree Hill um, and others around the league, higher than you know Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. If you think about other really good quarterback receiver duos, you know it's remarkable. But then, of course, you're going to have people look through the numbers and say, "Well, how is how is DJ Moore getting his yards?" I mean, he's a yak monster, and we knew that going in. But those short passes, which I know have frustrated some Bears fans, because they, they've been so prevalent, you know. We started to see the tide shift on that last week where there was that 38-yard touchdown on the free play on 4th and 13 and a big third down catch uh, at another point in the game for D.J. Moore. He's so critical to not only the growth of Justin Fields, but how the team has been able to win games. It's this little mini two-game winning streak, but also winning five of their last nine. You mentioned Montez Sweat and and what he has meant to this team because at the time the trade was made, it was surprising to give up an asset, right, for a guy that now they're saying we're obviously going to secure him. You give him a big new deal. But since he's come in, this is a top eight scoring defense, top five total defense, number two in takeaways. He's got a sack in three straight games. Has, has Mont- Can we overstate the impact that Montez Sweat has made? I don't think so because, I mean, you think about what they did right before – or at the beginning of training camp, they make the tr- they make the they sign Unique Ngakwe to a one year deal. They needed to support that pass rush up front, and even then, it was kind of a dud for the first nine weeks. They barely got pressure on the quarterback. They you know it affected what they were doing on the back end of the defense. I think weeks one through nine, they were averaging less than one takeaway a game because they couldn't pressure quarterbacks. Quarterbacks had all the time in the world to throw and that affected what this defense is built on what a tampa 2 defense is built on which is forcing turnovers and getting those takeaways so having montez sweat part of this pass rush has not only made them better at getting after quarterbacks you've seen the sack numbers go up since week 10 but really a better defense top to bottom and and that's where you know you take a look at a team that's five and eight coming into cleveland where we know how well the browns play at home all of those things are true, but who wants to play the Bears' defense right now the way that it has been playing? The only caveat in there is that Ngakwe is out for the season with a broken ankle, so can they keep that pressure up? How creative do they get? What looks do they decide to throw at Cleveland um, You know, with, with replacing Ngakwe on the other side so then not all the attention is going to be shifted towards Montez Sweat because that's the balance they, they were able to figure out once they had two capable edge rushers in there instead of just one. Talking to Courtney Cronin, ESPN Chicago. Court, I'm looking at this. So at Cleveland, obviously Sunday, then it's Arizona at home, Falcons at home, at Packers. Um, Around here, we're like, boy, get to 10, and in the AFC, that'll probably do it. Is there a number that is being talked about there in terms of – because at 5-8 and in the NFC, you're still in it. What's the number that that you guys think does it? I think they got to win out, and I know that sounds so unrealistic, but – you know, if you look at just like the numbers based on their projections, like they have a 68% chance if they win their four games, and that's not factoring in other results. They're going to have to have some luck bounce their way, maybe a couple of losses for Green Bay here and there, Minnesota keep losing. Like the division stuff's going to be super critical. But I, I have, if, if this, this is the biggest game, you guys are right, this is the biggest game of the season for Chicago, probably their biggest since 2020, to be honest. Because if somehow the way that they're playing, they're able to carry this momentum from the last two games, 
into Cleveland to beat a team that seems destined for the playoffs, and then your schedule gets remarkably easier from there. I mean, Arizona and uh, Atlanta are very much on par, if not maybe it's a rung below where the Bears are right now, which is weird to say considering this team started out 2-7. and seven. But, like, the, the vibes around this team – and the fact that we're even mentioning playoffs right now for a 5-8 and eight team, it speaks to the landscape of the NFC, but it yeah, also yep. speaks to what's been going on this season in, in the Bears organization. I mean, there's been – I feel like I've lived like 10 years <laughs> in the span of four months because of how much stuff has gone on with this group and how they've been able to overcome it and not end up like, a, you know, like the Chargers, for, for lack of a better example, because that's a team that quit last night. That's a team that gave up on its coach. And probably has been training that way for a while, despite all of the stuff, the coach firings, the Chase Claypool situation, Justin Fields early in the season throwing coaches under the bus. Um, like they've still somehow managed to stay afloat, and now it, like what they've done the last couple of weeks, it's starting to show them proof that what they're doing is working, which I think helps the overall result and helps the vibes for a 5-8 and eight team that thinks, okay, if we just continue on this trend, the playoffs might be within reach. It's got to win. They probably got to win out to do it. But I haven't been around a group that's been like that resilient at this point when they've had every chance to mail it in, and they haven't. Courtney, thank you so much for your time. Yes, appreciate you on the Vikings beat and now on the Bears beat, and always appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, guys. Take care. All right, that's Courtney Cronin, ESPN NFL Nation Bears reporter, ESPN radio host. They are the most fascinating team in the league. It's going to be a heck of where an they interesting offseason. Yeah, the offseason is going to be fascinating. Diametrically opposed. Yep. You That's, could start we, over. You we could. were putting together the pre, pre-game show, and normally when you have like a one-off like the Bears, unless they're they're playing for something, you wouldn't necessarily put someone on in the pre-game show to talk yeah. about them. You're kind of like, eh, let's focus on what we're doing. And I'm like, nah, we're going to have a Bears guest this week. Well, sure. Give me the other thing is, is – you don't even know if they have good fortune on the season if it will matter. Because the, still the smart thing to do might be to go to Caleb Williams. Re- regardless. Regardless. Yeah, that it, might be the right play. Is it false hope? Because you're you going no to – I mean, that happened here with this organization 12 or 13 years ago. It, before us, uh, I think it was Mangini. They won like six in a row to close out the season. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, got to run it back. Well, be careful. It, well, it, and they've it, also have they have they have a first round draft pick who's playing the best football he's played. They've got quite a bit of talent around him. They have two picks in the top seven as it stands right now. If they if they auction off number one overall, three ones and players. I mean, they could be set up forever. <laughs> yep. Or yep. they could pick or it. Or they could pick trade it, fields for a and two. Still pick up. What's, what do you think Fields gets you back? A two? Or a one? Does he get you a one? He I think could. he might, the way he's playing. Yeah. A one, one singular one? One singular one. You might get that. Yeah. And now you're picking first, seventh, wherever the Falcons are picking. Three ones in this draft? Yeah. Yeah, they got they got a ton of options. And the crazy thing is, is like they've always blown all of these opportunities <laughs> historically. I know. The all Warren thing, I totally forget. T- until she said it, and then it lo- – same thing oh, as dude, you. I, I was like, I went, oh, oh yeah. God. Those like two don't like each other. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Warren was like, everybody follow me. And the SEC was like, no, nah, we're good. And then Ohio State sent Justin Fields out to, to be the face of the Big Ten. He's on Good Morning America taking shots at Kevin Warren. Yep. And now Kevin Warren could decide his future. That's crazy. Over unders coming up next. Cleveland Runs Daily, 850 ESPN.
I'm excited for this. The Rolling Stones Hackney Diamonds Tour will be at Cleveland Brown Stadium on Saturday, June 15th. Tickets on sale now. Visit clevelandbrownstadium.com slash Rolling Stones for more information. Uno's literally Let's got go. his hands up the whole Let's time. Go. He's so excited. Let's Uno. Uno. Let's Uno. What a job out of you. Look at him slide himself he into the shot. He slid right in. That was like a Collinsworth slide. It was slide. a Collinsworth slide. The, the highlight was copy. during the commercial break, the conversation that went on between Uno and Ocho. Yeah, yeah. Did they know this was coming? No, they did not know this was coming. It was literally Ocho out of nowhere going, hey, before you drive, make sure you push your bumper back in. I'm oh, like, no. Uno. Like I go, Uno, is what your happened car? To what happened to your car? What happened to it? I, I I don't know what happened to your car. Do we want to say this out loud? Maybe maybe it's a hit and run situation. Well, I think he's a borderline hoarder cops. in his car. I don't so know. he's a hoarder, and now he's also a there, hit and there's run. There's piles of things in oh, his car. God, I've know. yelled at him to clean it a couple times. You yelled at him to clean it. Yep. He, there's also like money sitting that's, on his like like. That's the thing you get with with Gibbe when you're an intern. Not only do you get the 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 uh, career stewardship and all of that How about you also get lessons? you also get life lessons and some fatherly advice like that you get a little bit of that too so it all, it all comes in it's all it's man fantastic. i'm just trying to help you out Help, helping bit. the kids in life you can't leave money on your dash can't do it like no. bigger bills you however you can leave a car in that parking lot for six years and nobody will care with no. a window out it's as fine long, as long as it's a bmw suv just sit there I forever. park next to it every day. I look inside. At some point, I'm going to get inside and take a selfie. See if it and send starts. It to you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. I want you to go in there and see if it starts. All right, we got uh, a little over under fun. Uh, Gibbe got closer last week. A three and two week for Gibbe. A two and three week for Dr. Z. Dr. Z still has a one game lead, 37 and 23 overall to 36 and 24 overall, heading we to go. this week's over and unders. Week 15, gentlemen. Uh, we typically like to start in the quarterback room, and we will here as well. Um, I am going to start with Gebe on this. Total yards, Joe Flacco total yards accumulated over or under Justin Fields total yards accumulated. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Joe Flacco total yards accumulated over or under Justin Fields total yards accumulated. Uh, vest, uh, T. Uh, Scott's look vest, look Henley. Let's go. Come on. I, I it's would a football say Friday. that's amazing. I would. I, nice, I think nice. Fields. Fields. All right. So just because of the running aspect. Under or give it. What was it? Back for a bow. Oh, the bow. Yes, please. Please, a lot of bow. Yeah, all day. It was a nice light puffer. It was a nice light puffer. It was a light puffer. It wasn't. It didn't get out of hand. I like it. It was a strong look for him on a Friday. So last week. Justin Fields would have had 223 yards passing, 58 yards rushing, so 281 total yards. Joe Flacco would have had 310 Flacco, yep. total yards. That would have been Flacco by a 30 spot yep. there. You know what? I got a chance to talk with him. You're all in the Flacco. I'm all in. I got flat Long-term deal. Let's go. Flacco fever. Let's deal for this year. Flacco <laughs> fever. Rest of the season. Over. Next. Next. Over. Under. <laughs> All right, Z, I'll give you this one. You get uh, Elijah Moore, Amari, and Chief over under DJ Moore, Cole Komet, and Darnell Mooney. I think we're going to shut their passing da- game down. So over. Browns again. Bullish. Dr. Z. Yeah, give I'm going to do this. I'm going the same route. The secondary's All back. Right. All right. I'm going to make a little statement. On and in Sunday. this instance, it makes sense because you alluded to rustering, the rushing yeah. stats yep. of Justin Fields with your yep. first answer. Good yep. job out of you, Gibby. Crosses. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. Crosses all yeah, some of good the logic. T's and dots Gibby the logic. I like it. Next. Over. Under. Jerome Ford. Gibby. Total yards. 84 and a half. Total yards. 84 and a half. Over. Over. Yes. All right. I think this Ngakwe thing. I think it's a much bigger deal come Sunday, and I don't think the Bears are ready, and they're not going to be able to compensate you're, you're for count, his loss. You're going slump town, slump town. It was the last time Fields was here, nine sacks that day. I don't know, slump town, but I'm definitely I feel pretty good. Dr. Z? Running backs are averaging 127 total yards a game against the Bears this season. 69 yards rushing, 3.7 yards carry, but six catches for 58 yards. They have five receiving touchdowns as well. You said 84 total yards? 84 and a half. 
Yeah, Ford last week was at 82. He's still peacocking. Of course All the way is. over there, of course. away he's from made a, us. He's, he's made a still full, peacocking full look circle. Look at that strut. He strutted all the way through, peacocked around. Now he's going that way. It's unbelievable. Um, Fantastic. I'm going over, Jerome Ford. All right, over. All right. Next. Over, under. All right, boys. It's a big one. It's a big one, Dr. Z. Five and a half. Wow, that is big. It's massive. Fields. I hate you. We've had these. We've had slop. We've had it. Fields on he's average. Gonna give it is, to he's going to get sacked three times. Three yep. to four. Yep. So the question is, can you get two takeaways to buttress that? And now Fields, he really hasn't turned the ball over. In last six games, ten touchdowns, two interceptions. I'm going to go under. I think we're going to hit five is going to be the number. Under for Dr. Z. Give a. Oh, man, look at that. Look now at what? Him. What's he doing now? No, Gibby on TV. Oh, oh, Gibby. <laughs> He's scratching his chin. He's There's so much going pop. on. I know. There's a lot going He's on. Now we're peacocking I, all I, the way back there. I, we I got hate, Connor with a K coming up, taking snapshots. I hate, going, I hate going the same route as him on this. But I I feel like I, we're, we would have been we over sacks, last week. But I don't know if we have the turnovers. Under. Forgive yeah, me. I mean, the weather, not great. What do we got weather-wise? Warm, uh, about a 60% chance of rain on and off. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's gorgeous today. Close to 50 on Sunday. Yeah. If we had, if we didn't have, uh, if we still had daylight savings time, you could play a little golf after the show, boys. All right. Actual over, under. Next. Over, under. Gibbe, 38 and a half. Well, it's better than the 30 we got last 32. week. 32.5 last week. Both of you correctly went over. That's right. 38 and a half, give me. Where did I go wrong last week? Uh, you had the Amari Chief Ridley Ingram. Incorrect? Yeah. I'm going to go under. Just, right. just under. Literally, I, ha- I have 2117 in my head. So you guys only have one different right now, and it is the Flacco yards versus the field's total yards. That's it. He's going under. You're an over guy. You always go over. I do. They're a good defense. We're a good defense. I don't, I don't think this will be a high-scoring game. I'm going to go under as well. Oh, my gosh. 17-6. Wow. So it'll either be. 17, 20, 20 to 6 Browns. It'll either be 20 to 6 Browns. Yeah, it'll either be a victory and we will be even Steven or a lot of luminaries there with some long, luminary. yeah, the long first long poses. That's, yeah, and that's a power. That's a what power. is that's going on? Lo- because there know. hasn't been a person in this building all well, day. They're all here now. And now the luminaries are here. Luminaries are here. You want a luminary? You get a luminary. Luminaries One for everybody. Everywhere. Yeah, I craziness. All right, there you go. I don't. I do not like going under. I that's don't. not true. You go. He never goes under. I know, but there's a lot of times that I'm over as well. Now where's he off to? Uh, what is he doing? Stride. What's he? What isn't he doing? Running a Run business. business. That's what he's what he's doing. doing. Yeah, that's how that he's guy's going. He's running a business. Um, how about my wife wearing his shirt? So many ways to interpret that I'd, statement. Give yeah. a, I don't think any of them are safe for us to comment on on air. The so birthday. We'll, shirt. I don't think any of them are good for you. The birthday shirt. Same. I I stand by what is I that said. Like a suit. Keys to victory coming up next. You'll see. Play the Browns daily on eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.
Over the last 90 years, family-owned and operated Rumpke Waste Recycling, grown to become one of the largest waste and recycling companies in the United States. We're proud to be the recycler of choice for the city of Cleveland. Visit Rumpke.com to learn more. Joined now live in studio by safety's coach Efren Bonda joining us. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time. Normally, we would be talking about your stellar safety. We're still talking about your stellar safety <laughs> play, but my goodness, this is your room finally got hit about as big as it can get hit, and you guys are deep into the depth chart, but what we saw last week from Ronnie Hickman was a guy who was ready, and now more will be called upon from that group. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it's ball in December, right? Yeah. It's the NFL in December. Luckily, I ain't got to look too far for inspiration when you talk about you know, some of the things we've been through. You know, You look at Coach Stump and what he's done with the running backs. Uh, you know, look at Coach Callahan and what he's done with the offensive line and, and you know, and, uh, and Scott and Coach DeCoster. Um, you know, it's just uh, you look at look at AVP and Coach and Kevin, you know, what they've done with the quarterback. So in terms of uh, looking for inspiration in the building, I don't got to go too far because those guys done a great job. To be honest with you, I need to I need to reach the standard because they've done a hell of a job doing that. Well, your guys are certainly making you look very good. Ronnie comes in, gets a huge PBU uh, on that fourth down. Gets a nice little bit of on-field coaching from AWOC on that add-on blitz and make sure he's going that leads to Greg Newsom's pick there. Yeah. So for a guy that, you know, undrafted free agent, didn't get the reps this week because Juan was expected to go after certainly after Wednesday, mm -hmm. for him to go out there and do what he did, what did that tell you about Ronnie and how pleased were you with his performance? Just super pleased for sure. And shout out AWOC on that play. You know, talk about, you know, good players are good players, but great players make them people around them better. And AWOC was – Heady, you know, heady player, but and then obviously um, Ronnie on that play where to add on was smart. We talk about that all the time, and, and and needing to do that if that ever happened. He read his key and went, and, and obviously pushed the ball. Uh, you know, Trevor couldn't step in, and, and Greg finishes it off with a great play. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, obviously super proud of him. Um, he's a young man that you know behind closed doors is always the same. Uh, I remember sitting down with him at the draft, and it's all crazy. That's like we're in a room with. Uh, you know, 100 DBs and all these scouts are pulling at this guy and pulling that guy and there's a clock going off in the corner and you can only sit down for X amount of time and it's madness. But I remember sitting down with Ronnie for the first time and just listening to him. He was super calm, cool, and collected like you two guys are right now. Nothing on the outside environment was, would shake him. And I felt like he's done a good job that in the meeting rooms and then when he gets in the games, he's the same way. Uh, definitely still got room for improvement, a lot of room for growth. Um, but I like where he's at currently, especially, you know, not being a drafted guy. He came in with a chip on his shoulder, and, and we talked about it that night when, when I gave him a shout and said, hey, we want you to be a Brown. So happy for him, happy for D-Bell as well. Coach, how do you build uh, – how do you go about building trust and depth? Uh, because you yeah. mentioned, like, how we've had this throughout the, throughout the roster. And, look, like, you, you get these catastrophic injuries, and it's an it's emotional time. You're, these, kid, these players are incredibly invested. But all of a sudden, they go away, and you've got to be able to – to have the next guy and that trust is the word that always comes to my mind in terms of you got to have that how do you do that yeah, well I think it starts early in this process I'm talking like you know in the in the personnel decision making part of it you know you think about what AB and his staff has done in terms of identifying the type of people we want in this in this building and then making sure that we execute that in, in player acquisition I think it does start there because if you don't have the right type of people that, that, that you can trust, that you can bring in this building, and, and those two people, that's not who they are in their mm -hmm. core. It doesn't matter what you do. You can slap a, you know, we trust you on your T-shirt. That is nothing. You know, it's got to be who they are in their core. But then that takes time, and, and they have to go out there and prove that in the, you know, in the preseason games, right, in the limited reps they get, um, in the opportunities when Coach Schwartz calls on a rookie – to stand up in front of the whole defensive group and answer questions in front of all of their peers, 10, 12-year vets, uh, all pros. Like, all that is part of building the trust amongst the teammates, you know, amongst your teammates and in the room. And it's a process that starts early in player acquisition all the way into, you know, those Saturday you know morning meetings where Coach Schwartz gets in there and does his quiz show, and he'll call those young guys out, and they got to be ready. Uh, because all he's doing is he's prepping them for these moments so that when it's time to go – they're ready to go. Yeah, and we're talking about the young guys. You know, Ronnie DeAnthony is going to make his first start, and he's another undrafted free agent from a year. It was actually the first one ever on a Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Barry team to make yeah. the 53 yeah. was DeAnthony Bell. Um, 
you know, he came in, I thought did a good job tackling, certainly getting to the ball quickly. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him, and how's he going to kind of slide into what Grant was doing, making so many plays, kind of really playing linebacker? Yeah, you know, um, D. Bell, if you go back and look at some of the games throughout the year, you know, we've we've had some guys go down in situations – uh, late in the games where D Bell's had to been he's had to been you know thrust into third down dime situations with a lot on the line yeah. and I felt he's handled all of those well to be honest with you I'm more frantic on the sideline than he is <laughs> he's almost like hey coach I got you chill yeah. out and uh so I you know he's he's had some moments some plays that have kind of led him to this runway uh and I felt like obviously you know losing Grant was 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 hard tough emotionally for everybody uh, because of the presence and the toughness and the player that he's, you know, he has been this year for us. But I felt like D. Bell has walked in there with confidence and ready to go. D. Bell had a moment there with Coach Schwartz, another one of those um, quiz show mornings where D. Bell got called on by Coach Schwartz. And I felt like he really answered the questions at a really high level. And I think that was the moment where everyone was like, okay, yeah, like even Coach Schwartz was like, all right, all right, D-Bell gave him a little love, and, and then that, that confidence grows with reps sure. and time. So, you know, for sure he's going to step in and, and, and try to um, operate in the best he can and the highest level possible, and we got a ton of confidence in him. So you're going to have a guy who was an undrafted free agent a year ago starting. You're going to have another guy who was an undrafted free agent this year starting on the back end. And then you bring in a three-time <laughs> Super Bowl champion yeah. in his 11th season, 23 career interceptions. He's got a great nickname, the closer, because he has a penchant for making big plays late in games. <laughs> you bring Deron Harmon in, which, and for you, that's team, we've had Rodney, you yeah. know, obviously Grant, Juan, they've all played quite a bit. But what's it like getting a guy like Deron at this point in the season? Obviously probably has a little chip on his shoulder against the Chicago Bears in particular after starting with them this year. Yeah. What's it been like having him come in? Because just being around him or kind of loosely see him, seems like he is all business. Like, yeah. Just and in great shape still. He is. No, he is. And uh, I'll tell you this, Andrew Barry's getting a good Christmas gift for me, a nice one, because uh, <laughs> bringing Rod in here was huge for me. You know, in my first year of just being an NFL. Look, I've coached this game for a good amount of time in high levels. But, you know, one of the things, you know, it's going through year one in the NFL, like bringing in a vet for me was huge. You know, uh, Coach, you know, obviously um, Kevin and, and Coach Schwartz, they, they understood what they were doing. And it was massive in my development just personally. Yeah. But also just having a vet that knows how to handle this, this league and the time. You know, losing Rod was tough, but then they, they doubled down, right? So I had to get him two gifts, uh, <laughs> and they bring in Deron Harmon. And he's been unbelievable for us. Uh, a great, awesome pro to have in there. Uh, he picks things up. He's smart. Uh, he asks great questions. But the best part about it is he's super coachable. You know, you got a guy that's been in the league this long and has so much success. Sometimes, you know, that's tough. You yeah. know, uh, I've walked into programs where guys have been there four or five years starting in college, and you can't get them to change their ways. And Rod is, was not like that, and neither, neither is the closer. You know, yeah. he's still – coachable still wants to know how and the way we do things so it's been a blessing uh I I'm excited he, every practice this week has been better and better like it's gotten me excited to see him get in the game and, and play and we trust him and I think more than anything else we talked about this at the beginning of the week we need to go out there as a group and instill confidence in everyone else with the way we play and how well we play and that and I think we, you know he's done a good job of that throughout the week of practice Coach, I understand it's the NFL. It's part of the business. You lose guys. You got another game coming on Sunday. But it's, at the same time, there's a human element to this. And, and I want to ask you about Grant. Um, he took from what our vantage point was a leap uh, the, into the type of player he was this year. Um, and obviously, the, the timing of this, quite frankly, sucks. But yeah. just can you speak to what you saw from him in growth? Uh, obviously, the contract extension. We love so he's going to be the way. Yeah, we, we, we loved him in the draft. Oh, my God. We, were, we, were, we yeah. loved him Juice in the draft. We got we were, we've yeah. loved him forever. So we were waiting for this type of fully healthy explosion. Then you have the injury. But just the growth that he had and obviously the, the organization feeling like he'd be, he's going to be a cornerstone with the yeah. contract. Uh, just what did you what did you see from him this year? And, and what was this year like for you coaching him? You know, I, I'll say this. I loved him before the Browns did. Uh, I loved him in recruiting when he was still at Lamar High School, you know, displaced from Hurricane Katrina. And, and uh, I wanted to coach him then because of all the intangibles that he, that he has. You know, I saw the potential early. And obviously, I kind of knew he'd end up at LSU. He's got a great relationship with his grandmother and being from that area. But um, for me, the growth, not only from seeing him as a high school player through college and then now getting the opportunity to coach him here, um, has just been unbelievably um, fun in terms of coaching. Like, this, this profession's hard, man. Um, 
especially at this level, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Your satisfaction, what you get as a coach is seeing guys like that take big steps, uh, helping them along the way, right, serving them. And that was my main goal. I wanted to come in here and serve Grant the best I could. And he took huge jumps in areas that I just really wanted him. I saw areas that I feel like he could take the next level and grow in. Yep. And that and that was part part of that. To be honest with you, was him like kind of coming out of his comfort zone and making his presence felt not just physically like he does, but also vocally and and making sure that the team felt that defensively, because when he does that, it makes everyone better. So definitely uh, was a bummer to to obviously have the situation. But at the same time, I texted him that night and I said, listen, I know this is this, you know, to have this information and, and to be told that, hey, for right now it's over. But at the same time, signing a contract, you know what I mean, and, and moving wow. on in your career, I said, don't lose sight of what you achieved and your mm -hmm. goal and, and make sure that you celebrate that because I know your emotions are probably getting pulled in different directions. So I just, again, love, love the young man. Uh, really kudos to his family, raising him the right way. Kudos to this place, the ownership and personnel to invest in a person like that because that's going to go a long way, not just in terms of the player he is, but setting the culture of this place. And you can tell just he has the respect of his teammates. And, you know, you were talking about, I remember talking to you earlier this year when you said one of the things you challenged him was working a little bit on his man coverage. And you go back to week one, yeah. locks up T. Higgins on a huge <laughs> third down play yeah. Yeah. in that game. And, yeah, just such a, such a leader has been through so much even with us. Remember, I mean, we were – there was a day we're out there we were practice, broadcasting live, yeah. broadcasting live from training camp, and they're just doing the drill where they kind of just go back and throw it up and leap an inch off the ground to catch it. Yeah. Achilles right there on that day in practice took away his entire rookie season. He's come back and certainly couldn't be happier uh, for him. I want to ask you just one thing, kind of like more of a footballish sure. question. In your room, you know, you guys are in many ways the last line of defense, and we play single high more than <laughs> anybody in the league. And so yeah. there is a lot of responsibility, whether we're playing cover one or cover three, for that single high safety. And it's yeah. been Juan, it's been Ronnie. You know, kind of what's the mentality you guys have about that? And then uh, I'll ask you about one play in a second. But just the mentality of, like, we're going to play single high a lot. So yeah. you got to be ready, and sometimes that means you got to be able to come downhill like Ronnie did on that fourth down, and sometimes it means you better be deeper than the deepest. Yeah. Um, look, I've coached attack front my whole career and a one-high defense. That's all I know. Um, so for me, I understand the importance of the position and what comes with that in terms of being the last line of defense, overlapping and fixing mistakes, and also understanding that when the ball does get to us, if we don't make that play – it's probably going to be seven points. Um, so we spend a lot of time in that moment, working in that situation, which is hard because those situations in games are bang, bang, hard to rep in practice opportunities. So I've worked hard over my career trying to simulate that as much yep. as possible, whether it's getting the ball down when it pops, right? Overlapping our, our corners, our linebackers when, when plays break down. Um, so, you know, that's been a point of emphasis for me, not just here, but over my career of making sure that you try to rep those moments so that when they get in the game, they've already done it as much as they can, whether it's in an indie environment, whether it's in a uh, half line environment or scout period. Uh, so, yeah, we, we spent a lot of time in that, trying to find those situations, but a lot of time on those bags, working open field tackling and trying to improve or help limit those points by getting those guys on the ground in those situations. All right, I want to ask you about the the interception for MJ Emerson, the first one. We're in cover yeah. three. Uh, I was talking to Ronnie about it, and he said you guys had basically put in that coverage for that play. You guys had a good <laughs> idea that play was coming. You were able to get that in there, and he said that one was teach tape. And so I'm going to ask you, it was, was he right on that? So he did a great job. He recognized the over. He comes down on that. You had MJ on top, and Greg was able to kind of almost get back almost to the middle on the mm -hmm. other side. So you basically had both routes taken away. But when you kind of watch a play like that and see a young player you know, make that decisive decision, there he wasn't taking the cheese because nah. he had the help over the top, but he was able to go – and take away that over, force that throw, which leads to an interception. Yeah, no, that's something we had to work on a lot, all dating back to phase one, phase two, getting into Greenbrier. Took a lot of stuff from Coach Schwartz early, and, and uh, I still remember some of them. And they stick to me because, you know, I take it personal. Um, and I want to I serve Coach Schwartz in this defense the best I can. I want it to look the way he wants it to look. So to, to have that play executed the way it was executed, 
um, to, for him to understand where, where it was coming from, for him to cut that route and, and understand how to do that at, a, at the level. And then to see the corners, you know, uh, to see the corners just – if you watch on the other side, like if that ball travels a little bit more inside – Greg's getting it. Greg's got it. Yep. And, and uh, you know, after that play – on the sideline, you know, you see you see B. Lynch take off like right when it's happening, <laughs> and the ball's still in the air, and I'm chasing down the sideline to B. Lynch, and then we, he makes the play. I go over there and, and and grab him because those are those moments in coaching that you just you enjoy. You know, you're happy for those guys. You know, you've kind of messed that up sometimes, and, and you know it it happens in a game for Ronnie. It was teach tape. I told Ronnie, I said, hey man, that, I'm gonna show. When you're 10, 15 years in the league and I'm working, you know, with some young guy, I'm going to show that play because that's teach tape. That's what it should look like. That's a that's a back end working together. And uh, it's fun to see those fun to have those moments. Fun sure. to see those guys celebrate. I can tell you, you telling him that stuck with him. He's very pleased. About yeah, that's that. cool. Man. He's a good, good kid. That yeah. entire room in good hands with you, sir. Yeah. Good luck on Sunday. Thank yes. you so much for stopping by. Appreciate you guys. Do a hell of a job. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Our, your keys to beating the Bears coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland. And the preferred provider of copiers and document services with Cleveland Browns. Tackle any size office at 216 485 2000 or visit OhioBusinessMachines.com. Time for your keys to beating the Bears this weekend. And for that, we turn to Dr. Z. 
All right. Key number one, it's going to be the same until someday we do it. Let's have a clean game on offense. One time, Let's baby. not one turn time. it up. Well, we've done it once. Let's do it twice. Oh, my God. Real Let's qu- just two. So th- All right. Go ahead. I just want to double check. This has to do with something else in town. Look, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I shouldn't have interrupted. It's a bad job out of me. No, not a bad job out of you. Looks like Mobley and Garland both gone for extended weeks for the Cavs. For the Cavs. Yeah. So a knee on Mobley out several weeks, six to eight weeks on that. And then Garland's out several weeks. With well, fortunately, job. this isn't. So luckily, CCD. this is not CCD. This, this is, is CBD, CBD and we right. dealt with our own. This yeah. city, my God, the injuries. Kids. What's in the water? What's in the water? Let's go. Fine. Clean game, I'm number ready one. Ready to go. Clean I game. I got a few. My I got a few plays left. I can elbow some people into the front row. Lame beer. Oh my god. In a heartbeat. You know his game. Banned from church leagues. Let's go. Of course you were. Him and my dad have probably the same, same game, except game. my dad probably can shoot it a little bit better than Gibbe, and, and Gibbe can make a layup in my Ironically, dad both want to put yokes around you. Yes. Not yeah. ironic. It's a Perhaps similarity not lost on not me. Not lost yes. on you. Yes. That The lame beer. <laughs> the lame beer. Those The followers of the yes. disciples of Bill Lame Beer. Yeah, there's a similar. Don't enjoy my yes. antics. No, they don't. As probably, much as they probably should. Probably enjoy Bob Knight. Yes. And, and the je- yes. For sure. Right there. That's how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. All, All right. right. Number one, clean. Clean. Clean, 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 clean. This team does a good job taking away the football. They've taken it away 11 times in the last five games, nine interceptions. They've got 15 picks on the season, second most in the NFL. So you've got to take care of the football. That's Joe Flacco. That's everybody who handles the ball. If we don't turn it over, we will win this game. Number two, you've got to limit the explosives. They're an explosive run team, 57 runs of 10 or more yards. They're an explosive pass team. Justin Fields quarterback rating 133 on passes of more than 20 yards in the air. DJ Moore's top three in terms of receptions and touchdowns of more than 20 yards in the air we have got to limit those explosive those chunks and if we do that make them matriculate the ball down the field you'll get negative plays you'll get negative plays sacking Justin Fields he'll get sacked at least three times in this one and that will be enough for us there so defensively very important to go ahead and not allow those big plays if you can take the football away even better that would be great but I think those two things will really tell the tale in this game. I think offensively, you know, if we can protect, and the loss of Ngakwe I think is a big one. Montez Sweat's still very, very good. But if we can protect, give Joe Flacco time, you're not going to go at Jalen Johnson. you got to be very judicious with the ball. But Tyreek Stevenson, their rookie from the U, Coach Banda probably knows him very well. I think that's the guy that you can get after. And if you are the Browns, that's going to lead to success down the field. And so you'll be able to chunk play them when they are not able to chunk play you. And Good job to you. Thank you. Your Friday forecast presented by Carrier. Carrier, turn to the experts. 50% chance of rain, a high of 47, unseasonably warm. And we'll take it. I'm not not going to take it. No, it's nice out there right now. Well, you know what time it is? little segment we like to call Pay Attention to the Scores and the debut of River Zashin. Miss Z. Miss Z. Can she stay as hot as we are? I don't know because we're pff, caution flammable. Cleveland Browns Daily 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Let Tide Cleaners take care of your laundry, dry cleaning needs. You're up this holiday season. Enjoy $10 off, 40 or more all month long with code BROWNS10. Exclusions apply. Visit locally owned and operated Tide Cleaners in the greater Cleveland area and make the most of your holidays. Time for a little segment we like to call Pay Attention to the Scores. Miss Z is here. She shadowed all week. Yes. And now she will participate in the scores. How did we do last week, sir? Uh, well, we're hot. That's the bottom line. I went ten and five. You went nine and six. You now sit at a robust fifty-eight games over five hundred. I'm at fifty-four. I mean, it's, it's crazy, it's ludicrous. And this is every week, every game. It's cr- with the scores, with the scores every with week, scores. every game, every week, every game. Not picking the ones we want. Nope. Picking the whole league, the whole enchilada. Be interesting to see. Put Uno on it. Anybody who picks games against the scores. I'd be very curious to know if anybody doing it has done better than us this year individually and then historically. No way. Not there's no possible no, way. No. There's no possible. Kids are going to college. We sent somebody on a, on a Denver trip. We might get some people to USC. You never yeah. know. Is your dad aware that you're making your radio debut right now? I think he is aware. Let's go. Is he but listening? He, did, he didn't know what time I was going to be on. So. Right. Is he listening? Did you text him? and say it's coming. It's happening. It's happening well, right now, Mr. Z. Happening. Yes. The Big Z? Can we call him Big Z? Uh, Mr. Z? You're Big Z. Yeah, I would. And then would, would he be, be Mr. Z? Apropos. He would be. He's like Baller Z. BZ? BZ. Yeah. That's also that's El Boots, but BZ is not bad. Yeah. That's true. He's, a, he's, listen, tremendous human, tremendous attorney, and tremendous a future human. wrestling superstar. Why stop there? I won't. I mean, we could go on, but we got father, scores to get to. Father of Miss Z, who's yeah. going to ascend. And, and her brothers. They'll right. ascend. They, it's quite the lineage. Are, yeah. All right, Gibby. Mike, be nice if, you had a, if you're not on. You're be not nice on. if you knew. If, nice if you'd done. Can't hear you. So, River, your first now? time, you're now on Now you're on. Hey. It's not his first time not <laughs> yeah. on. And yeah. if he had, normally, as you'll learn, as you if you were to continue in any of this type of Oh, we medium, spent the commercial break rewiring. There's a, there is a light that comes on in most studios that lets you know that, in fact, your, your mic microphone is, is hot, on. Like, and it is on air. Right by your yeah. microphone. So it's, it's usually on, off, psh, cuff, and there's a, it's psh, glowing. Psh, you know yep. that you're on yeah. the air. Here. We, ah, no. we like may design the studio, difficulty. Though. Yeah, he do, wanted us. Like, that's why I have to do this a lot. And then he'll say, you're on. Because how else do we know? You have to make it harder here. I think she's difficulty. smart enough to have been here a week to understand that this is not on me. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to throw. I think that was finally uh, giving acknowledgement because he would not. He doesn't want Missy to know yeah. or to be- think that perhaps this was designed by him. In all actuality, <laughs> finally him acknowledging He's admitting it. that yes, I did. Yeah. I actually had nothing to do with this. But. Yes. Well, well who, who's no consulted? Uh, more from the Los Angeles Chargers. The interim head coach is Giff. Smith. G I G F Smith. Gift Smith. Gift. I want a gift. I want a gift of Gift Smith. Right Hold now. on. From our good friend Benjamin Albright. Gift Smith. New Chargers interim head coach Gift Smith. Gift, not Jif, because I was wondering. Gif. Was Roman Reigns D line coach in college at Georgia Tech? Well, makes you know sense why then. they're doing this? Because they don't want. Uh, your Any, boy Kellen Moore to like win a couple games, and then they're like, and then oh, they go, oh, we got to, we got to just keep Kellen Moore. So no. this prevents that. From Prevent, happening. yeah. Gifts, Gift Gif Smith. Smith is not. This is a. <laughs> this is the ceiling. Three Hold games on. and done. It's Gif even Smith. better. The interim GM is JoJo Wooden. Fantastic name. <laughs> I think anytime you got a JoJo, that's a win. It was like when you had Jim Bob Cooter running around the NFL. Love that guy. I mean, <laughs> that's a win every time. Every time. All right, let's get things going because it is a full weekend. All right, River, we're going to track your the success of your picks. All right. I just we wanted to beat Pedro's you had, number from the week he was here. I don't think that will be hard. He, no. He only had like – he was like 4-12. and 12. Perfect. So, River, low Managing bar. Managing expectations. You got, and you're already 1-0 because she was, she was with, us, with us. Yeah, she yep. was with us yesterday. Mm-hmm. Saturday games. On a Thursday. A fantastic little triple header for the kids. And we kick things off by going to Northern Kentucky. The Natty. Yep. The Bengals hosting Nick Mullins and the Minnesota Vikings. Bengals have won two in a row. A big one here for us in the CLE. Zagura, kick us off. Yeah, I, I like Nick Mullins. I thought he was he, it was a game effort that he gave on that Monday night in COVID on what was supposed to be a Saturday football That's game right. that was played yeah. on a Monday afternoon. God. But – 
this Bengals team is playing for something, as are the Vikings. I just think the Vikings are, they're trending in a very bad direction, whereas I think the Bengals are trending in a very good direction. Bengals 97, Vikings 1. Bengals have been rolling uh, over 30 the last two weeks, beat the Vic- or beat the Jaguars, beat the Colts. Jamar Chase, Chesty, I'm chasing Chesty. you down, Ocho Cinco. Um, I, I think they cruise in this one. Uh, Bengals, huge, 31-7. Yeah, I agree. Bengals, definitely all the way. I think that with them being at home, they're going to have more opportunities. So I'm going 24-17, Bengals. Good job. What a debut. What a debut. What a debut. debut. Good job out of you. That was better. Uh, maybe Pedro the best usually debut. reads yeah. off of things. Cue so cards. Yeah, you're doing yeah, well. No, that was very good. good. Yeah. Up next, guys, the middle game on Saturday afternoon. It is the Squealers from the land of hot dog water traveling to Indianapolis. Shrimp cocktails for everyone. Colts, Squealers, Bishop. You know the second most wagered, don't even look, the second most wagered team to win outright this week is Pittsburgh. Colts by a billion. Love it. Minshew mania. This one is going to be a slobber knocker, as they say. The Colts get a safety of Trubisky, and they win it 2-0. God, I thank God you didn't go 2-1. <laughs> Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't dream of it. Yeah. Steelers taking it. I mean, what? no, no, no. Colts. Colts, huge. Colts, Colts huge. 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 Ram it. <laughs> huge. There we go. All right. Listen, start off strong. Scary little moment. Step Went back. a little down. Little step back on, on game right two. But it, well, you got more. You're you got more. Right yeah, you're going to bounce right back. <laughs> to the Saturday night nightcap, which I could use a nightcap right about now. It's uh, almost time. Give the, me 20 minutes. The Denver Broncos are 7-6. and six. They go to the D. The Detroit Lions, 9-4. and 4-2 four. Four and two at home. Denver. On the road, three and three. Not sure what to make of them, Zagura. This feels like uh, we talked about it a little Vegas zony, and it feels like the Lions just lost. Boy, they looked really bad. A lot of people saw them on national TV. They didn't look great against the Packers on Thanksgiving. But this isn't just a little number. This is a this is a substantial number, and thus, I believe that the Leones get it right. They right the ship here today, Detroit. 39, Broncos country. Let's ride. 30. Same, but different. Detroit, 31. Broncos country, let's ride. 28. I don't know about that. I think Lions, they're at home. I think they're going to take it. I think it's going to be 24, 17 Lions. He's with you. He's with you. That's right. Let's go. Same Let's but different. Go. Same but different. So oh, River runs through. So it. If, Let's go. If, if you're counting at home tomorrow, we're lo- we're rooting for Minnesota, Indy, and Detroit. Well, we're, we're worried about the scores here, Gibe. I know, but like Browns fans. Yes. You're, you're, that's what yes, you're, you're rooting definitely for, rooting you for the, the tiebreaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Sure, 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 sure. On to Sunday we go. Uh, Mike McDaniel today. No Tyreek Hill today. Tyreek Hill has not practiced all week with the ankle. He is considered questionable for the Dolphins game at home against the New York football Jets. Bishop. These guys at home against bad teams, usually it's 13 and a half, 12 and a half. This seems like an overreaction to what happened in the Titans game. Tyreek or no, is Zach really going to stack it? I think not. I like Miami winning 27-10. Zagura. Listen, Raheem Mostert is, has taken me to the promised land. No Tyreek Hill. They say his decision, his, uh, his status will be made based on a conversation, according to there Mike McDaniel. But they're going to be cruising along. Mostert touchdown, maybe HN, maybe Jalen Waddle gets in there. He does his little <laughs> duck dance. He waddles around. That's fine. But then all of a sudden, I heard such a clatter. Oh, my God. Who's Bootsy. at the back door? Who possibly Bootsy. could be at the back it's door? It's the Wilson boys. Zach and Garrett saying, oh, yeah, sure, great. Vikings or the Dolphins, they're up 30 to 14. They're feeling great up 16. It's all so easy. Until it isn't. Touchdown. Garrett Wilson, 30 to 21. Dolphins win. But the Jets. All 
also win? Mm. <laughs> yeah, dolphins usually beat up on the worst or teams. That's correct. And wait a second. I, we're not going to go with worse. She just dropped yeah. worser. I could not worser. be a big. Yeah. No, worser. I Be-t- use worser, worser all the time. Worser. Better or knuckles. worser. It's a good word. It's a good word. I'm giving you knuckles. We it's go better or worser. Yeah. I use it worser. all the time. Yeah. I use worser. Good job of you. It's a good word. Yeah. There it is. Um, and yeah, I just think the Dolphins are going to take it this time. I'm right. going 27-7. Dang. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Go. So now you guys have an alliance. That's right. Yep. Onward we go. Houston visiting Tennessee. No offense, I I just want Houston to win. Yep. With this Tennessee pulling this Oiler crap. Agree, but we kind of want Tennessee to. We want Tennessee to win. C.J. Stroud DNP today, DNP all week. Clearly trending the not so right direction. Zagura, Davis Mills. Gross. Can Davis Mills pay the bills? I remember last year, late in the season, all Houston had to do was lose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Davis Mills said, we will not lose. I will throw a touchdown to future Browns tight end Jordan Akins. I will convert a fourth and 20 on this drive as well. And then I will get a two-point conversion also to Jordan Akins. And we will not get the number one pick because I was playing chess, not checkers, because we actually wanted Carolina to take Bryce Young so we could get it CJ Stroud. Out. It's brilliant. Davis Mills is ahead of the game. He sees things before they happen that nobody could comprehend, not even Mike Vrabel. And you know Mike Vrabel when things go south. He doesn't care. I don't know if you're a lip reader or not, but he told that young punt returner when he heard his excuse for why he touched that ball. I, I don't, don't care. care. I don't care. And didn't He's say Tommy that. Tommy Lee Jones. He didn't say that quite that nicely. Not Tommy at all. Lee Jones in the fugitive. Yeah. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. I don't care. No. Yeah. That's right. Davis Mills, seer of seer, prognosticator of prognosticators. He gets it done. Houston, 17. Titans, 12. Incredible breakdown by you. Thank you. Titans. We only have eight more games. Titans, seven. Texans, two. Wow. Yeah, I just don't think the Texans are going to let them win this one. Like, this is controversial. I don't think that they can let this happen. So I'm going 28-24 Texans. Let's go. There you go. This aggression will not stand with will the uniforms, stand. Bo. We'll, you we'll, are rooting for the I'm axis of evil. Levis, angry runs this week. Yeah, there's a little, there's typically little juice, a regression. Little juice. There's typically a regression after All that. Right, we'll see. Battle of the Bays up next. Tampa Bay. Baker Mayfield traveling to Green Bay and Lambeau Field. Packer running backs Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, both listed as questionable. Chris Godwin for Tampa Bay, a game-time decision with a knee. Bo Bishop. How did it go the last time Baker played up in Green Bay with us? Christmas Day. Ask Segura. He was there. there. How'd it go? How'd it go? Not great. Packers by a billion. Same. Same. There yes. Up. Picking up. Picking it up. Quick study. Quick study. Very, Very impressive. Very good. USC's Very good listening. Indeed. US, that's right. This is an audition. Yep. Syracuse, though, on the horn trying to. It's warmer. It's cold. Too cold. It's cold. Too cold. Warm. But you're in the orange. They're saying, look, you're yeah, already dressed. I'm already you're in the doing orange. The colors, Go, warm. Yeah. Go warm. Go warm. Go warm. The New York football giants are 5 and 8. They got some guy named DeVito. They're, his agent's going into the Italian Hall of Fame or something. I, I'll leave. I'll, I'm not going to say anything. Don't about it. because Florio's going to get all over you. I didn't, wasn't even going to say that because I. That's where I was going to go. But like, come on, the, the G men are going to the Big life. Easy. Yeah, this let's weekend. let him enjoy it. Let's uh, let him enjoy it. New Orleans is six and seven. It's a three-way tie for first with Tampa Bay and the Gutless Falcons. Uh, Zagura. This is one where I'm going to be mad at myself after the fact because it makes absolutely no sense why anybody on the planet would take New Orleans. And yet. So they're probably going to do what they need to do here with the scores, but I don't care. I've got DeVito mania. Same. I want mm-hmm. it. I want to be rooting for Tommy. Yeah. Shane Stiletto. You see the thing like that he that did guy. with the guy with the guy Cooge? Meals by Cooge, and they're going through the pastas and the Beautiful. cutlets. I mean, it's everything I want. We got Cooge in there. Brush your hair, yeah. brush your teeth. Let's, Love that guy. Bro, yeah, Cooch. Uh, you yeah. know him well, man. He's, He's great. great. Beautiful. Yeah, so, I mean, with the power of the great Cougine, you can't lose. They've won and 0 since that video's dropped. I think they go to 2-0. I say Giants outright. DeVito puts up 
a whopping 1,765,452 points. Yeah. And the Saints are Chatty not. Chatty Cathy here they all lose. of a sudden has found his zest for life at the I most time. Giants, Giants, Giants. Giants. Same all the way around. Uh, here's the inmate game of the week, kids. The Gutless Gross. Falcons, 6-7 and seven at 1-12 and 12 Carolina. Come on, Tabes, get a win. It's not happening. Um, they're just so pathetic. It, they're just so you can bad. get tickets right now for 45 cents. You'd have to pay me to 40 go to that thing. Five Atlanta cents. 5, Carolina 1. Same. Same. Oh, man. Yep. I'm picking up steam now. Onward we go. I think Isaiah Pacheco, if I just he's saw out. correctly, he's is out. out. He's out. Kansas City, I don't think it's going to matter. Traveling east to New England. Eh, you get a good meal on Saturday night in Providence. Go up and kick a little ass on Sunday. Uh, Chiefs so looking to get right against the, the New England Patriots. Zagura. Am I right about that, though? No, you're safe no, with that you're one. Safe? You're yeah. safe? All right, good. Phew. Give a. Close, but safe. Safe. So let's play on this. Let's let's play with him. Let's color between the lines. What are you talking about? You're safe. You're safe. Go. Chiefs. Go. go. Nine. Patriots. Zero. Yeah, same. It's uh, oh, I guess. It, it's 20 to 10. 20 to Griff, 10. Something like that. that. You're safe. You're safe. Don't Griff, worry. I can say that. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> go ahead. Missy, go. <laughs> Nothing like a sidebar 10, on the air. Chiefs. Oh, 17, 17 10. So that she's was? got, yeah, she's got New England. Watch Whoa. out for the scores on that. That's Watch the first out. time that River spread her wings. She's going to fly on her own. She's flying on her yeah. own for the first time. Okay. All right. That'll be a great I told you so that you'll get to have. We will see. We'll have to, we'll have to bring you back if that one hits. Uh, to the NFC West, 49ers on the road. Why is this one Doesn't matter. So They're 5-2. and two. They're visiting the 3-10 and 10 Arizona Cardinals late afternoon, Bo Bishop. It feels like one that would be Kyler at the back door. It does. It does feel like that. However, I thought that last week, and it wasn't. Uh, in a divisional game. I think the Niners are just on another level. I like the Niners 31-17. Nerd Spumoni. Niners, agreed. You can't you can't stop it. I think Kyler still has a good game, but I think the Niners beat him 40 to 24. Yeah, I'm Niners 31-10. So Love it. beat down as well. Love it. Love it. Uh, yeah, up love next, it. we got to go rapid fire. Washington visiting Los Angeles and the Rams at SoFi. Brian Robinson out for Washington. Zagura. Ram it. Ram it. Ram it huge. Ram it huge. Same, Rams same, huge. Same, 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 same. 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 Uh, big one in Buffalo. Beer and wings and table slams. The Bills playing host to the Dallas Cowboys. And now your most active. Outright winner of the week, Dallas. Oh, God, yeah. no. This one was a lot. Bills, Bills by a billion. Nobody circles the wagons Nobody. like the Buffalo Bills. I don't like yes. this. They're getting hot at the wrong time. They still might not make it. They still not. It might not matter. Yeah. Might it not might matter. not matter. So we're in agreement, unanimous? Yep. Bills. Unanimous. Bills the board. by 30. Yep. Sunday night foosball. It is the Ravens at Jacksonville. I don't know. Come on, Jacksonville. Do us a solid. Uh, not not this not week. Gonna... Not this week. Baltimore. Baltimore handles their business. No, they don't. Oh, we need to keep God. our dream alive when the <laughs> AFC North. That only happens with the Jags taking care of business. It Trevor Lawrence. Dust. Oh, baby. He's feeling good at the ankle. Another week to heal. Evan Ingram yeah. really playing nicely. Ridley. Oh, baby. Jags, get it done in this one. 17-16. Yeah, no. Don't agree with that. It's yeah. going to be Ravens, 31-21. 31-21 ah. Ravens. There you go. We'll pick our game coming up next. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Elk and Elk, serious lawyer, serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO for a free case for you. Elk and Elk's proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. Your Sunday on the Cleveland Browns radio network starts at 9 a.m. with Browns game day. Ken and Gerard, 11 a.m., the Cleveland Browns kickoff show with Andy and Tyvis. And then 1 o'clock at Cleveland Browns Stadium, the Browns and the Bears. Jim, Z, Gerard. Let's go. Let's go. 24-10, I already said it. 24-10, Browns, huge. You think they it stays that they'll stay that low? I do. I think it could re- resemble the Jags game a little bit. Like there's, we're so wounded. All right, I just imagine change mine into an over over there. <laughs> Browns thirty four twenty four. That seems more like so. That seems like where it's at. A shootout. The I just okay think they're going to get some. I think it's going to be an exciting game. All right, we had it. Browns by a billion though. But I mean, I I think it's going to be fun. Missy. Yeah. Clearly, Browns. she's in the hoodie. She's ready. Browns has got their dog pound yeah, hoodie on. She's ready. ready to go. She's ready to go. Yeah. Browns by a billion. Yeah. What a treat. Thank you for uh, Good job this week, Missy. Time. Great job. Hawkins finest. That's right. Just the great Miss Z. We now have a That's Miss right. Z. We do. In the, in the mix. Um, all right, kids. The next level is coming up next. Obviously, a lot going on in the Cleveland sports world today. Uh, they will have you covered on that. We are back on Monday to break it all down. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.